Hey, welcome, Indraji. Uh, a very good afternoon. Um, so, can you start with your brief introduction uh, at the work around uh, what skills you have worked on in your current company? Uh, what are the uh, exact roles you are working in? Uh, yes, hi, Ritesh. So, I am Indrajit. I am from Hyderabad. I am I am having four years of experience in Power Platform domain. I have worked on Power Apps, Power Automate, Canvas Apps, Model Driven Apps, and then uh, Power BI. And I had integrated various Power Platform tools together. So previously, I worked with Microsoft as a vendor capacity. Right now, I'm working with uh, Striker. So yeah. So here, I'm responsible for uh, completing uh, the projects end to end. I gather the requirement. After that, I create approach documents. So once it is done, I'll get it reviewed from my uh, stakeholders. So once it is reviewed then I'll start working on it. So once it is, uh, once the development is completed, so then we go back to them for UAT feedbacks. So after UAT feedbacks, like we will push it to production. So here my tech stack is around Power Platform only, and I am getting some data from SQL Server and then reporting it in the Power BI reports also. So let me start with some uh, normal questions. So how, uh, I mean, how many members team is it you are working as a standalone member or there are at the other team members in your team also? Yeah, previously I was working uh, in a team like we were um, a team of 15 members. So right now here I'm working as an individual contributor. I have experience in both like I have worked in a team also and I'm working as an individual contributor also. Okay, okay. So um, as well as an individual contributor, uh, what all difficulties have you faced uh, maybe while working on any power platform or maybe working on any power apps environment uh, any difficulties which you can highlight uh, so ritesh like uh, to be honest like uh, while individual uh, working as an individual contributor so we may pay, we may face sometimes uh, some difficulties related to the requirement like where we need to uh, implement something tricky and we are not aware about how to implement so then we need, we don't have anybody to help us like how to go ahead. So then we need to check it by uh, on. Then we need to research around Google or then we need to uh, research on various Microsoft Power Platform community like how to achieve that solution. So there it might uh, take some time. But at the same time, it is good for us. Like while suppose I, I'm searching how to create a dynamic login user. So for that, I need to uh, search and uh, like while searching, I'll come across 10 other things that will help me in increasing my knowledge. So this is the thing that uh, I I am facing challenges, but I think it is a uh, good for me. Uh, I consider. OK, OK, cool. Now uh, let's start with the technical aspects. Uh, so can you give me an idea about what do you mean by delegation in Power Apps? Uh, yeah, so basically delegation is nothing. Uh, what in, uh, basically if you are creating a Canvas app, so there are like you will be able to read only 2000 records uh, at max. So there are some delegable function and there are some non-delegable function. If you are using a non-delegable function, so then they will run on only top 2000 records. Suppose you are having a data set and in your data set you are having 10,000 record and you are using a count rows function. So then count rows will return you only 2000 uh, number because uh, it, it works on only top 2000 records. So to remove uh, this delegation warning, what we will do is we will create the delegable function. So delegable functions are nothing but they will run directly on the data source and it will give you the results. OK, um, thanks. Thanks for the brief explanation about delegation. So any idea about local and global variables which are used in Power Apps? Yes, so basically there are two types of variable which we which we use in Canvas app. One is local variable and second one is global variable. So for local variable, the scope of the variable is confined to a single screen only. For global variable, we can use it across the screens. So for local variable, we use update context to uh, declare a variable. And if we are using update context, that means that is local variable and it will be used in that screen itself. So if we want to declare a global variable, then we will use set variable name and then the value. So then it will be used across the Power App, no matter how many screens you have in the Power App. Okay, okay. 
so uh, i mean what exactly do you mean by power automate how different is it with respect to power apps i mean you can give me a brief idea uh, there would be a certain difference right uh, yes so basically power apps are nothing what they are used to create enterprise applications so as i mentioned uh, canvas app so in canvas app we are having complete control over the ui so suppose you want to have a login button in uh, some way that you want to achieve like it should be of the some different color you want to use different image and suppose you want to have the menu icon out at the bottom or some uh, after some time uh, the requirement came the menu item should be on the top so all the ui elements we can customize in the canvas app so similarly we have another type of app named as model driven app so model driven app we use when we the main focus is data not ui so in model driven app we have out of the box ui available like we have forms views all those things uh, so then we we will be able to uh, like add the data from there so power automate is uh, like totally different to that power automate is used to achieve the automations like the uh, what to say cloud automations and desktop automation so cloud by cloud automations what i mean is suppose you are creating a power app okay and you have a page there where you are uh, registering the users so once a user is registered suppose you want to send an email to the user that you are you are registered with the app now you can use it so for that what we can do is we can integrate our power app with the power automate so uh, in backend the power our power automate will run it will fetch the details of the users which are stored in your data uh, dataverse or whatever data source you are using so then uh, like after that uh, it will fetch the details and send the email to the users like the automations part we can achieve using power automate and it is tightly integrated with power platform product like we can integrate it with power apps we can integrate it with power bi similarly we can integrate with model driven apps yeah okay um, yeah so as you said the power automate uh, more a kind of automation is used so you have any idea about what all uh, actions are present what all uh, flows are present inside this power automate <clears throat> yeah so basically there are two main component of a power automate flow first is trigger then our then our actions so trigger is the first step of any power automate flow that you are creating so we are having different types of trigger available uh, first will be the manual trigger yeah, the manual trigger is nothing suppose you want to run a automation on demand like whenever you want to run you go to the power automate flow click on run and it will run and second one is a recurrence trigger so recurrence trigger is nothing but uh, suppose you want to run an automation at every 3 pm or uh, every day uh, 3 pm so then you will schedule that it will automatically run at 3 pm so then the third one is like suppose you want to run the automation once a item is created in the sharepoint or once a record is created in the sharepoint so that is automated trigger so it will automatically get um, your flow will automatically get executed once uh, the item is created in uh, there so and then there are various sections which are present suppose you want to do some manipulation in the dataverse so then you have various dataverse actions available like get row update a row delete a row similarly for sql also it is available similarly if you want to perform various operations like suppose you want to select some items it is available you want to filter the data it is available you want to parse the json output it is also available there so yeah this is about triggers and action in power automate okay so so thanks for the brief explanation so as you said uh, i mean there would be different flows there would be different triggers available as and when required we can change it so you have any idea about uh, i mean what all basic uh, actions which are frequently used or maybe you can give me an idea how to get a data from uh, api into power automate Uh, yes so basically to get a data from api first of all we need to be aware about uh, the authentication method of the api okay so if uh, the api is public so then we can directly use http connector and we can uh, uh, select the method as a get and then we will get the data from the api now suppose the api is uh, private protected so then we will be we will uh, be able to um, get the bearer token for that so the bearer token for bearer token the lifetime of bearer token uh, it depends like for most of the time it is 24 hours so what what we need to do is 
first of all we need to create a trigger depending on the requirement when we want to uh, get the data from api in the second action or we need to use http connector we need to fire client id and client secret that will generate a bearer token for us then in the third action we will fire the actual api by passing the bearer token that we have generated in the second step so and then after the output of third step we will get the parse json output uh, from the api uh, the json output from the api then we will use the parse json uh, action from our power automate that will convert uh, that will pass the json and convert the output into object then we will use other select action on the select in the select action we will select all the items which which are required for our use so then uh, after that suppose i want to dump this data into sql server i will use a sql server uh, connector to uh, update a row so then i will uh, sorry i will use apply to each and then in apply to each i will pass that select output then i will use uh, uh, update a row connector uh, so then i will update uh, the data one by one there and it will be updated okay now as you said maybe in last few sessions you are using the word called as data verse so can you give me an idea what exactly data verse is i mean how what is the exact use of data verse in this power platform environment so ritesh uh, data verse is the virtual database that is provided by microsoft uh, in power platform license itself so you can consider data verse as the back end of uh, all power platform tools it is not that they run on only data verse but it is out of the box uh, data data solution which is provided by microsoft so we can store the data into data verse uh, in entities we can create relationships we can uh, get the data from data verse into power apps power automate and basically it is a similar a kind of data source only similar uh, similar to sql only but it is out of the box with microsoft that is tightly integrated with all the power platform products okay now as you said it's a tight integrated and it's a special database or special source which is given by microsoft so are there any yeah. security rules which also has an impact on them i mean how, what all security rules are there in case of dataverse so basically security rules are nothing they are used to prevent uh, the access on the dataverse so suppose uh, you have created an entity and you want a particular user to have only read access to the entity you don't want a particular user to update the uh, entity so for that suppose you have so many users you have around 150 users so one option is to go to the user one by one and then give to, give access to the them on the entity so that is not a scalable solution so for that we have uh, the security rules in place so so you can create a default uh, you can create a new security role that will say uh, like a read access uh, to team members and on that security role you can give access to entity access to the particular entity that you created as only read so then you can add all the members of uh, your team who whom you want to only read the data to that security role so then all the members which are there in that security role will inherit all the accesses which were given to that security role basically it is similar to as your active directory groups okay okay got you um any idea about pagination or what do you mean by pagination in power automate uh yes so pagination is suppose you are using a get items uh, from sql server so it will give you only 5000 records so if you want to get more if suppose uh, in your sql server you are having 20000 records and if you are using a get item so it will read only 5000 records so if you want to read those 20000 so then we need to enable the pagination so how it will be enabled you have to click on the three dots uh, of the sql server uh action then you need to go to the settings and there there is a, a field called pagination and we can increase it to 20000 so then we will be able to uh, read 20000 records all at once and it it the upper limit of pagination in power automate is 1 lakh rows okay okay but you i mean you have any idea about power bi also i mean you have mentioned in your resume that i can see you have a good exposure to power bi as well so yeah. you okay so can you correlate the pagination in power automate and pagination in power bi i guess it's both the same but if you can give me an idea how different is it okay pagination in power automate and pagination in power bi yep yep 
just a sec so basically in power automate i already uh, explained to you like what is pagination so in power bi pagination refers to the number of pages in the report and arrangement of uh, report items on those pages so it's it's basically same. I mean, if in brief, in case uh, pagination, if we have a visual in Power BI where we are getting a scroller, in one single view we are not able to see all the records as the same yeah, in Power correct. Automate. So similarly, in case of Power BI, if you take a paginated report and if you're taking a visual, if that page or if that visual is getting more number of records, it will go on adding multiple pages. So it it will be a pixel perfect organization or pixel perfect. Uh, the information was uh, it, it will be clustered into multiple pages if the number of information is going beyond certain limit yeah yeah page unit report got it yes okay okay and any idea about managed and unmanaged solutions uh, how how it works uh, yes so basically solutions are nothing they are uh, the container which contain everything about the uh, uh, system in power platform like solution will contain entities they will contain relationships they will contain the custom javascript uh, scripts they will contain the plugin execution so solution are used to uh, uh, transport uh, one component from one environment to another so we are having two types of solution managed and unmanaged solution so suppose you are using a development environment so in development environment you need to uh, uh, update the various forms various entities like you know you will be updating the solution components so then for there we will be using unmanaged solution so suppose uh, then in the develop in the production environment if you are not uh, supposed to do any uh, editing there so that's why there we will use the managed solution so basically the bottom line is in unmanaged solution we can do the uh, updation but in unmanaged solution uh, in the managed solution we can't do uh, any updation okay um, I mean, how do we deploy that solutions to power platform? Uh, any, I mean, what is the process? What steps we follow? So suppose you want to deploy the solution from uh, uh, development to production. So then what we, what will you do is we will, you will export the solution as a managed solution from the unmanaged environment that is development environment. So after exporting, uh, you will go to the target environment that is the develop uh, production environment in our case. So then and there what we need to do is we, there will be export but uh, import button so once you click on that import button you have to locate that zip file that you have imported in the previous step and then you need to click on uh, the import so then uh, your solution will get imported and all the fun uh, changes that you did in the development environment will get reflected in the production environment okay cool um now as i can see you mentioned power bi so have you ever worked on integrating power apps or power automate inside power bi yeah i have uh, integrated canvas app uh, in power bi so what was the reason i mean what was the exact requirement uh, where you have integrated power apps into power bi uh, yeah, so basically there was a, a survey form that we need to uh, give to the users uh, so we we have integrated that form in the power uh, in the power bi okay and i mean how a refresh happens i mean if you want to publish that i mean you have integrated that specific power app to the power bi so how a refresh happens do we directly publish that report and automatically when the power app gets updated that updated data would be refreshed in power bi any idea on this uh, refresh in the canvas app how it will happen no that same canvas app which you have integrated in power bi if in case yeah. i want to refresh the power bi also how that refresh takes place anyways power app would be refreshed canvas app would be refreshed but as and when the app is getting refreshed that same data would be directly available inside power bi service when a where the report is published yeah, yeah. so for refresh we have uh, uh, like two options we can refresh the report report manually or we can schedule a refresh so if you want to refresh the report manu uh, manually you can go to the cementing model and click on a refresh icon there so then it will get refreshed on demand so if you want to schedule the refresh you can go to the settings and then enable the schedule refresh there so it is it depends on the licensing also for power bi pro it is eight times and for power bi premium it is 40 48 times a day okay got you um any idea about uh, what all filters are present inside power bi i mean what type of filters are there 
yeah basically there are three types of filters which are present uh, page level filter report level filter and the visual level filter so basically visual level filter is nothing what suppose uh, suppose you want to uh, show the particular data on the visual so then you can apl uh, apply the visual level filter and suppose you want to for page level filter suppose you want to uh, apply the filter on a particular page so rather than going applying the filter to all the visuals one by one you can apply directly report level uh, sorry page level filter it will get applied to all the visuals which are present in that uh, in that page so report level filter is the filter that will apply it across all the pages in the report okay um got you uh, i guess i'm good with power bi and whatever you have explained in terms of uh, power platform or power automate environment also uh, the power apps and power automate environment uh, so can you give me an idea i mean are you the only person who are working for power automate i mean the power platform environment as well as the uh, the power bi environment or are there any other members in your team who is helping you in power bi development no no i here in my current project i am the individual contributor i am responsible for getting the data and then creating power bi reports and then creating canvas app on top of it so basically i have uh, did a development on model driven apps also extensively so i i did uh, various uh, javascript coding into that to implement the business logic and similarly i have worked on plugins also in c shop to implement business logic so yeah here i am the only team member who is responsible for working across the power platform that is power bi power automate canvas apps model driven apps and in data source i have worked with uh, google bigquery then sql server then mongodb uh, sharepoint so all these things i have worked on so you have connected all these data sources to power bi also yeah correct okay um so um, if you can give me idea um, i mean how uh, the project which we are looking out for here is more a combination of power uh, platform as well as the power bi combination because we want a person who knows both the environments uh, who is well versed okay. with both the technologies so uh, how early i mean how how early you can cope up with the because this specific role is uh, primarily for a retail domain so how early you can cope up with this uh, if you get a chance to get into uh, would it be okay uh, for you to uh, i mean do you need any additional specific information or will it be okay if we directly give some uh, documents or any kts and you will start uh, with the work yeah ritesh like the text tech that you have mentioned i don't think i i have any issues in that i have already worked on multiple projects related to this and i have handled the project individually for them so text tag text tag wise i don't feel there will be any issue uh, only thing is like few uh, days i'll be needing to require uh, i will be required to uh, understand the data points like what are the business logics what are the existing things that you have in place so for that i might need i might need some support from you but text tag wise i i am good into that that i'm confident i can work on uh, anything which which will co come under power bi power platform or anything which is related to this okay yeah thank you thank you for your explanation i mean we as a part of kpmg uh, we are working on some retail project so that was the reason i asked you uh, anyways once you enter this project you will get a bit ample of time no ample in the sense you will get uh, the kt videos also you will get some brief introduction about data points there are some documents so once you go through you will get a brief understanding what we want is we want an individual who can cope up who can learn the things very fast and who can grasp it uh, so that he can i mean come in picture come in terms what we are working so that is what our primary requirement was uh, was very nice talking to you uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to ask yeah thank you ritesh same here it was nice talking to you so i have just one question so the team for which i am getting hired you work on which technologies okay so here uh, a team is a combination of multiple uh, i mean multiple projects so we don't have only one single project here as a part of kpmg retail and analytics domain uh, more a kind of it works on uh, the uh, what you say the accounting the 
uh, statistical analysis uh, where we kind of retail accounting purpose. I mean, this project is more a kind of retail accounting or retail business domain. So what we do here is we have three separate teams. We have a data science team, which primarily focuses on data models only. Uh, we have a data engineering team who only works on Azure related stuff. And then we have a team which works on analytics, which is a combination of power platform and the power BI environment. So we would be hiring you for this specific position where power platform and power BI position is required. So you would be the standalone resource uh, for one single track. There are multiple tracks, but for one single track, you would be standalone resource where you need to, as I've said, where we would be sharing all the documents and data points. So you need to grasp them and you need to, uh, I mean, work on whatever requirement it comes with respect to accounting and retail purpose uh, inside this project. Oh, okay, Ritesh, got it. And how many uh, rounds will be there afterwards? Okay, usually this is first round of uh, discussion we will have uh, more a kind of end-to-end -end technical discussion only we have already had. So in case of second round, it would be combination of, I mean, some senior member would be joining and he would be asking some technical questions. Somewhere around, he would also ask you some managerial questions in between. So more a kind of uh, semi-technical as well as semi-managerial round, you can assume the afterwards, the second round would be. In first round, I mean, as it's more of pure technical only. Uh, um, so second round, somewhere HR will convey you. Um, she will get back to you with the update and when would be the further process. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm good there, Ritesh. Yep. Um, thank thank you, Indrajit. It was nice talking to you. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye.